Okay, we're looking at the integral between zero and infinity of x to the power of five multiplied by e to the power of minus x to the power of four dx. And the way we're gonna solve this integral is by drawing a connection with another integral that we know how to solve. And this is gonna be the famous Gaussian integral, which is the integral between minus infinity and infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. And we can solve this using a change of coordinates from Cartesian to polar coordinates to get the result that this is equal to the square root of pi. And this is a really nice result in itself. We're not gonna derive it here, but we're gonna use it to find the value of this integral. And to be able to use this, we actually need them to have the same limits. So we need to convert this from minus infinity to zero here. And the way we do that is we observe that this function that we're integrating is symmetric about um, the y-axis because if we have minus x squared, that's the same as plus x squared. So this is symmetric about the y-axis, which means we can change this lower limit from minus infinity to zero. And then to compensate that, we just need to put two at the front. And then this equation still holds. And just to have a value for this integral, I'm just gonna divide both sides by two. So we have this integral equals the square root of pi over two. And this is what we're gonna to use to get the solution to this integral. So we have an x power of four up here, and we want to convert it into an x power of two. So we can use a substitution method to get to that. So we let y equal to x squared, because then x power of four just corresponds to y squared. And to use this, we need to differentiate. So we have dy equals two x dx. So before we use the substitution, I'm just gonna rewrite this integral slightly just to see how this fits in. So we have the integral between zero and infinity of x squared squared, and this contributes as x power four, so we still have another x factor. Um, and then I'm just gonna rewrite this as e to the minus x squared squared again, and that's the same as x power four. And then we had another x uh, factor, as we were saying, so this is x dx. And now we can see that the x dx is just gonna re be replaced by dy divided by two, and then what's left is just factors of x squared, which we can replace by y. So using the substitution, we have the integral. And now the limits are actually exactly the same because if we put x is equal to zero into here, we get y is equal to zero. And if we think about putting infinity into here, we get the y equals infinity as well. Or you can at least consider the limit as x goes to infinity, we get the same limits. So now, we, as we're saying, we just replace this in terms of y, so we have y squared, e to the minus y squared. So we have the, the y squared up here, which is what we want. And then the x dx turns into dy divided by two. So we're close to the integral that we want to arrive to, except we have this factor of a y squared. So we want to eliminate this now, and a way to do this is to use integration by parts. And to use that, we need to kind of think about this a bit more carefully. We need to rewrite this. I'm just gonna write integral between zero and infinity. So we need to have the product of two things, one which we can differentiate and one which we can integrate. So what we can do is I'm gonna bring the two to the front and I'm gonna have y divided by two. And I'm splitting the y squared into two terms of y, which is fine. And then we have y grouped with this term, so e to the minus y squared dy. So this is the same integral, but now think about grouping these two terms. We have y divided by two, and we have this second term, y times this exponential. And now we have something we can differentiate, which is the y divided by two, and this is something we can integrate. So if we let u to be equal to y divided by two, which is what we're gonna differentiate, and v dashed as this second term, so y times e to the minus y squared. So differentiating u, we have u dashed is equal to a half, and integrating this, well, to see the antiderivative of this, think about differentiating this function, e to the minus y squared. If we differentiate this, we're gonna get kind of a factor of a minus two y out the front, and then the exponentials are gonna stay the same. So we get the y that we want, but we also have a minus two. So to balance that out, we need to put a minus a half here, and then the minus two and the minus a half are gonna cancel. So that's how to integrate this. And then we can just use the by parts formula. I'll just uh, remind you what it is. It's the integral of u times v dashed, which is the top row, what we're trying to integrate. This just equals the diagonal term, so u times v minus the integral of the bottom row, which is u dashed times v. So if we go ahead and use this formula, just plugging it in, we have, so u times v, which is minus y divided by four times e to the minus y squared with the limits zero and infinity. 
And then we have this n screw, we have minus the n screw, same limits, which is zero and infinity, of u dashed times v. And we see we have these constants, a half and minus a half. I'm going to bring them out the front of the n screw. So if we put them together, we get plus a quarter, combining it with this minus from the formula. So we have plus one over four times the integral of what's left. We just have this factor, which is e to the minus y squared dy, which is great because this is exactly the interval, integral we were talking about up here. This is the Gaussian integral. And we know what the answer to this is. So straight away, we can evaluate this integral. It's going to be one over four times the square root of pi over two. And we still have this bracket to evaluate. This is a little bit tricky because we need to think about putting infinity into this expression. And on one hand, y tends to infinity, but on the other hand, e to the minus y squared, this tends to zero as y goes to infinity. So we have infinity times zero, and the question is what is infinity times zero here? It turns out this is actually equal to zero in the limit because we have an exponent, and exponents are more powerful than just polynomials. And the way to see this is just think of the graph of e to the minus y, is, it decays like this, it's an exponential going backwards, and it decays towards zero. So as, as y goes to infinity, e to the minus y squared goes to zero, at, and really quickly, quite a fast rate. On the other hand, our other function, which is uh, y, just I'll just write y, this is a linear function, it's going up to infinity, but it's not going up to infinity faster than this is going down to infinity, uh, down to zero. So the product, you can prove it using analysis, this is just a bit more rigorous. But if we put infinity into here, it, the answer is going to be zero. So we have, this is equal to zero. And then if we put zero in here, the second limit, well, we have a zero, a y factor here. So this is going to be zero as well. So we have zero minus zero, and this doesn't contribute at all. And this is great because our answer then is just this. Our answer is the square root of pi divided by eight, which is a really nice answer. So there you go, that's the solution to this integral.